Every now and then a camera comes along that you get attached to. A lot of the times it may not necessarily be the best or at the top of its class, but features and specs don't often tell the whole story. For me, that camera is the Yashica Mat 124G, a camera that holds a special place in my heart for a few different reasons. So today's video is the start of a new series I'm doing called First Rolls, and these are kind of first impressions, early review style videos where I go out, create some images, and then also share the history on a specific camera. They're kind of half vlog, half review style videos. And for the first one, I couldn't think of a better camera to feature than the one that brought me back into the world of film photography, the Ashika Mat 124G. So I first came across the Yashica Mat 124G at a camera store in Portland, Oregon, and I'd never heard of it before, and I actually didn't even really know what a TLR camera was. And the Rolly Flexes that surrounded this camera on the shelves were way out of my price range, so I ended up leaving the store with the Yashica in hand, which was my first medium format camera, and kind of the one that sparked my obsession and my love for film photography. And unfortunately, a couple months after buying it, I decided to sell it so I could upgrade to 6x7, but it was a decision that I always regretted, so a couple months ago I decided to pick another one up. So with that being said, these rolls that I'm shooting in this video aren't really my first. The true first would be the images I created along the Oregon coast back in 2017, shooting Fuji 400H, a film stock that I ended up abandoning after falling in love with Portrait 400. So the couple of rolls I shot for this video were back when I was just exploring my local neighborhood over a few days, partially to test the camera and make sure it was working, and then also just to kind of go out and have some fun with it. Hey guys, so I've got the uh, Ishika Mat 124G. And uh, yeah, you know what? I've been shooting uh, Portra 400 for so long now with the last project that I was working on for like three years. So, you know, at this point starting something new, uh, I kind of just want to take some time and experiment and just have some fun again, you know, and just kind of create images um, and, and kind of see where it goes. So I got a few different film stocks um, that I'm, you know, trying out ones that I've shot before, but just want to see how they are now. So I got Fuji 400H, some expired NPS 160, and then I got some Ektar 100 and uh, yeah, see what I find. So for those of you who aren't too familiar with the 124G, I think it's important that we take a minute to talk about kind of how it came to life and why it's been a popular choice over the years for people, even though it may not be as slick as everyone's favorite TLR, the Rolly Flex. Yashica started building their TLR cameras back in the early 50s and made a number of different models over the years, including the Yashica B, the Yashica D, and the LM, to name a few. The top dog of the market, Rolleiflex, without a doubt, wore the crown for best built and most high quality TLR, but that came with a price. Yashica's approach was always quality and value, producing very capable cameras for a fraction of the price of others. The 124G was Yashica's most fully featured and also last TLR model that they made. It's obviously a 120 6x6 camera, and it has an 80 mm Yashinon f3.5 taking lens, equivalent to around 50 mm in the 135 format. It also has a 2.8 viewing lens and has a built-in meter, which was also kind of a rare feature at the time. So when it comes to using this camera, it's super straightforward. Uh, on the front, you have your shutter speed and aperture adjustments on these two little wheels here. And as you adjust those, uh, the information's kind of read out on top of the taking lens, so you know what you're selecting. Uh, Left-hand side of the camera, you got your focus adjustment and then you have your winder on the right-hand side of the camera. 
Uh, and then when it comes to the finder, it has a drop down magnifier here, which is really nice for checking critical focus. And then it also has what's called a sports finder, where you kind of look through the back here, this square notch that's cut out um, so you can compose at eye level. But I've never used that. Honestly, for me, a big appeal of using a TLR is composing using the ground glass, looking straight down. It's just kind of a really unique and fun way uh, to compose an image. So I've shot this kind of comp before in the past on my trips here, but uh, yeah, just such a cool shot. Love the, uh, the framing with the trees and the church. So gonna shoot it again. Pretty excited about this camera. So if you watched my Route 66 vlog that I did, um, I mentioned that this was the camera that I bought when I first got back into film and then I ended up selling it and I kind of regretted it ever since. So uh, I figured, you know, finishing up my last project and moving on to something new, I'm kind of just in this period of, you know, just playing around and having fun again and trying to discover what kind of catches my attention next. So I figured going back to the old Yashica uh, would be a good choice. So uh, yeah, the uh, camera is super simple. It has a built-in meter, which is nice. And on this uh, one that I bought, it's working and apparently was tested and works correctly. Uh, all I know is that you have to open the um, finder to activate the meter. And on mine, it's kind of inter intermittent. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Uh, so I have been using it, fingers crossed. Um, you know, I'm kind of double checking with what I know. So I, I should be good, but uh, we'll see. So this one's pretty cool as well. Just shooting this old church here. It's all these kind of neat compositions here through the trees. So it's funny getting used to a TLR camera again. Forget how long it takes to just, you know, get used to the fact that there's no prism in the viewfinder and everything's backwards. Uh, but only a matter of time. So when it comes to using this camera, the reality is, is that I've never used any other TLR, so I don't have anything I can really compare it to. But a lot of the times when you hear people talk about Rolly flexes, you hear them talk about kind of the build quality and the precision that they operate with. And the Yashica, in my opinion, isn't that. And that's not to say that it feels cheap or that it's a bad camera, very far from it. It's just that, you know, it has a couple plastic parts on it that it's built with, and maybe that kind of adds to the, the feel a little bit. But I mean, overall, it's still a really solid camera. Uh, focusing is super smooth. Uh, the finder itself is really nice and quite bright to compose with. And on this model, the meter actually ended up being quite accurate, which is pretty cool for a camera that's 40 or 50 years old. But probably my favorite thing with this camera has to be the lens, but it's something that brings with it a couple quirks. The Yashinon 80mm f3.5 is a beautiful lens and has always been regarded as a very capable performer. The images have a unique signature to them and stop down it's plenty sharp, definitely more than I'd ever need. Shoot it wide open and it gives you a ton of character. For me, it's a huge selling feature of this camera. But there is one issue that seems to plague most of these cameras that are on the used market, and that is haze in the taking lens. And for me now, I've had three copies of this camera. The first one was from a really good camera shop in Portland and it suffered from it. Uh, I bought a second version about a year ago. It was listed as mint, same thing. I had to return it. And then this one as well had recently been cleaned and listed as mint and it ended up having uh, haze in the taking lens as well. So apparently this is a really, really common problem with these cameras. Uh, so just be cautious of that, even if they're listed as mint when you're buying them. And a really good thing, if you can get your hands on the camera, what you wanna do is you wanna set the shutter speed to bulb, open up the back of the camera, hold it up to a bright light source, and then just trip the shutter and hold the shutter open while you look through the taking lens. And from what I've heard, it's a pretty easy fix though, just cause these lens designs are pretty simple. So um, if you pick one up and it does have haze, there's a good chance you can still fix it, maybe even yourself. As I mentioned at the start of this video, the Yashica Mat 124G definitely holds a special place in my heart. Is it the best TLR out there? No, but it's a damn good one. And even though the price has risen over the years, like with most film cameras, I still think it's worthwhile and is more than capable of producing images that are full of detail and character. Will you connect with it the same way that I have? That's tough to say, but I do know that us 124G owners all seem to have the same obsession with this camera. 
So even though I'm probably not gonna use this camera to shoot my next project, just because it's a good chance I'm gonna shoot it on six by seven, I'm definitely not gonna make the same mistake again and sell it. And sure, there's lots of other TLRs out there, uh, some in the same price range, some even cheaper that would produce just as good of results. But personally, I still wouldn't hesitate to recommend the 124G to anyone who's looking to get into the world of six by six. Maybe it's the sentimental value that this camera holds and the attachment that I have to it as my vehicle into the world of film, but there's just something about it and the images it creates that to me is special. And I'm excited to have it as part of my collection for years to come.